I just sat on my video notes, so it's going well. like this. I'm so sad. I filmed the entire video looking like a rat and I could have been filming with my hood. Oh shite. Spoiler alert, she's filming it again. I just filmed this entire video. It's just, the hair is not a vibe so I actually can't believe I've done this. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> no. I haven't filmed a sit down video in so long and it shows because I'm sweating um, but hello today I thought I would talk about oh good job I have my notes because I literally wrote the title on because I apparently can't remember what I'm filming a video about things I wish I knew before starting med school because I'm in fourth year now if you if you didn't know, if I haven't said it enough, um, I'm at Cambridge and I feel like the last four years have really taught me, have really taught me a lot. Um, I've gained, I've gained a lot of perspective over the past four years. Um, and I, and I thought I'd just impart like a tiny sliver of wisdom to anyone who will listen, which is probably not a lot of people. Anyway, um, I found a video the other day on my channel that I filmed at the end of first year that was talking about the mistakes that I'd made and tips and stuff like that and I would recommend going to watch that video. I will link it in the description because I will say, not to toot my own horn or anything, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, but I just realised that now being in clinical school and having had four years there are there are some things that I still very much would have done differently that I just wasn't even aware of back then. It just wasn't on my radar. And I feel like I should just I should just put it out there. If you're going into med school or you're early on in your med school career, then maybe this will be somewhat helpful. And you won't have to wait until fourth year to realise that actually you should have should have been doing you should have been doing things differently regrets. <laughs> anyway, I have notes written out but I just I just don't understand what I was saying in them. The first thing I thought we should discuss is when you're learning, this especially applies to unis that have a preclinical and clinical split but it pretty much applies to everyone. When you're learning in the early years, I would say try to relate the theory that you're learning to clinical practice because especially unis like Cambridge are not very good at integrating this but at the end of the day you will have to apply all of the theory into practice into real life to an actual patient um, and I think it's really easy to get sucked into rote learning theory and science and forgetting that you're actually gonna be a doctor, which is a whole other kettle of fish. But I think getting into the habit of doing this early on will be really helpful for when you actually get to clinical school, but it's also gonna help you learn, in my opinion. It would have made the process of learning and understanding a lot smoother, I think. It's just easier to process everything in your brain and to just think it through logically, organise it and just understand it. And then once you understand something, it's so much easier to memorise. Um, and I just wasn't thinking in those terms back then. So as an example, I found an essay the other day on my laptop from first year anatomy and it was basically about a 40 year old woman who came in with abdominal pain and it came on after eating and it was like use your anatomical knowledge to discuss what this could be and complications management whatever I remember this because at the time I I hated this question I was so used to just thinking about anatomy just purely as anatomy and like 
writing about the brachial plexus, let's say, and what nerves there were, where they were going, what they were innovating, whatever, job done, finished. I mean, it's not really going to work like that when you get to clinical school and beyond. And the question just completely baffled me because I was so not used to actually applying any of the knowledge that I supposedly had to a real life situation. And so, I mean, now, obviously, this is a very typical question for our clinical exams. And I can sit here and say it's biliary colic because it is biliary. It sounds exactly like biliary colic. Um, and I can also say that like the stone is probably sat in the common bile duct because the patient was also jaundiced so it has to be sat in that duct to be blocking the hepatic duct as well to then block the liver outflow right but at the time I remember being so confused and I just didn't know what was going on I didn't understand the biliary tree I just like I was on autopilot and I was just regurgitating stuff and just learning it as facts and I just didn't actually think through it and it now makes so much more sense to me having applied clinical aspects to it so I think if I had done that back then it really would have helped me um yeah you can obviously get through it just fine without doing that but I think in the long run it's really useful and in that same vein I think visualizing everything in med school is I'm very biased in this because I am a visual learner so if you kind of learn that way as well it's obviously going to be right up your street but medicine at the end of the day is a very visual subject. You're going to be dealing with people who are obviously 3D. The biggest thing for topics like anatomy is really actually use visual aids and look at it like you have to you have to use diagrams because our dissection manual, for example, was just a lot of text and very few diagrams actually. And that is absolutely not helpful because of course you need to know the contents of the text, but our exams were based on pro sections, right? And so if you know like the innovation of every muscle in the body, but you can't actually identify the muscle in situ and you don't know where it is, what it looks like, whatever, it's not really going to help you in the exam because you're still not going to know the answer. And on that note, this video is very kindly sponsored by KenHub, which is an online platform that combines lots of different tools for learning human anatomy, medical imaging and histology. Basically something that I wish I had known about when I was revising anatomy in first year, but is something that I will definitely be using now to, I was going to say go back over stuff, relearn stuff. <laughs> They have lots of different resources on there. They have detailed articles, videos, interactive quizzes, and high quality atlas images, diagrams, etc. Basically, anything you could want to revise anatomy all in one place, which is great because for subjects like anatomy that are so content heavy and so daunting to revise already, having everything in one place is ideal. And there's also so much on there for free. Um, their articles and their atlas images are completely free to access and then their videos and quizzes are premium features which I would highly recommend but I will get onto that in a minute. The content is organised into study units which basically combine all of the resources that they have for a particular topic and they have pretty much everything on there. They have like head and neck, upper limb, lower limb, thorax, abdo, like everything, all the muscles, the nerves, anything you could want to learn is on there. Um, so for example, if we have a look at the vagus nerve on Ken Hub, so there's the overview on here and then you've got the video and then you've got a quiz which you can take to test yourself, you've got the atlas image and there's a detailed description down here as well which is really helpful, there's more images. Then there's a summary which is so useful, it's got all the kind of key points about the structure, the branches, the function, and then you've got the articles which also contain notes about development which is so good because you just don't neglect embryology, that's a hard lesson, um, and also clinical notes which obviously we've talked about. I will die on the hill of saying that videos are the best way to learn anatomy, that is one thing that I did right when I was revising back in first year they are just it you see everything in 3d and someone's talking at you and it's it's a win-win situation and also quizzes i'm i feel like i might just be really weird but i really liked learning through quizzes i find them really fun 
is that, I don't know if that's just me, you can obviously test yourself and you can identify weak areas. KenHub have different types based on difficulty. They also have the option to make a custom quiz where you can kind of pick and choose what you want to be tested on, which is perfect for kind of tailoring your quiz to your learning needs. Um, and if all of that wasn't already enough, they also have muscle anatomy reference charts, which are basically summary cheat sheets, which is great, again, for revision. Um, and these are free to premium users, but you can purchase them separately if you want to. And the lower limb one is free for everyone. So if you want to have a look at them, you can. So yeah, if you're learning or revising anatomy, I would highly recommend going to check out KenHub. I will leave the link in the description box. And they've also very kindly given me a 10% discount code for the premium subscription, which I will also leave in the description box. And they also have a no questions asked seven day money back guarantee, which is a mouthful, but also very useful. So yeah, thank you so much to KenHub for sponsoring this video. And Let's get to more mistakes that I made. Yet another thing that I wish I had done is make notes. I think myself and a lot of other people speaking to them back, back in the day, we were all kind of convinced that it didn't really matter and that like we didn't really need any of it and we just kind of had to get through it and it was, it was kind of redundant. We were wrong. I don't know where that thought process came from, but you are actually going to need to know the stuff that you're learning for your clinical years, practice, whatever. Um, obviously, you definitely don't need to know it to the level of detail that they seem to want to teach you, but you do need to know the basic principles. Um, and then down the line, when you want to look up stuff that you inevitably forgot, it would be really helpful to have like just brief overview notes of all the topics and just have the key points so that you can go back and read over it because lord knows that i'm not reading through my highlighted lecture notes that are like ea thick for one topic like it's it's just not gonna happen so now i'm having to google everything which is just inconvenient um so yeah just just make notes as you go along they don't have to be super detailed just like brief brief notes on everything because mine are really sporadic. I have notes for some bits, I have no notes for other bits and they're just in general too much anyway. And similarly, try to stay on top of everything because as I said, you are gonna need to, you are gonna need to use it. And there are some topics that I personally completely just neglected back then because I was running out of time. Um, it's just kind of coming back to bite me in the butt because like the kidneys, for example, I just kind of sort of skimmed over it. And now I just, I hate anything to do with renal because I just don't understand it. I feel like there's definitely too much content to do everything to the same extent and like completely cover everything, but don't be like me and do the bare minimum because you will pass, but you will regret your decisions, especially physiology which really makes me very sad because it was one of my least favorite modules in first year and um, it it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. The next one, I hate to say it, but Anki or, or really anything that helps you learn through spaced repetition, that is the way to go. Like it is the way to learn. Um, it's taken me four years to figure this out, but I was very much an Anki hater back in the day. I still don't really like Anki. I don't know what about it. It just, it just gives me bad vibes. I was very much a kind of read through notes or write out notes sort of learner. And I think I really could have made everything so much easier for myself and so much smoother and so much faster to learn if I had been doing spaced repetition, which everyone talks about and everyone tells you to do, but I was just really stubborn. This year I've been doing pass med um, and that kind of forces you into that because the same sort of stuff would come up all the time. Like the hypertension guidelines, for example, would keep coming up and I would keep having to go back to them because I just didn't know them. And eventually I realized like I had just learned them, like they were in my head they like passively snuck their way in there. Um, and I hadn't like sat and l stared at the guidelines and tried to like memorize them. They just 
sunk in through constantly going back to them and looking at them. My camera ran out of storage because I've been talking so long. It's just a much faster way of learning things and it's easier and it makes more sense. And last of all, but arguably most importantly, it's not that deep. I think when you move from school to uni and especially to med school, it can feel so overwhelming, it's such a big jump and I think you can get sucked down the rabbit hole of thinking like, right, I'm in med school now, like I've got to do things properly, I've got, to, I've got to do it, I've got to do it properly. And putting that sort of pressure on yourself is just going to make everything a hundred times worse. There is no proper way of doing things and you do not need to sit in the library for six hours at a time to be like learning properly or revising pro or doing med school properly. Just doing little bits at a time is okay. And I feel like this is very self-explanatory and very much common sense, as was everything else in this video. But at least personally, I feel like you sometimes need a bit of a reminder of that because that was very much my mindset. This year is really the first year that I've kind of taken that to heart and actually started to implement it, Poten potentially very accidentally, but um, in clinical school here anyway, you get so much more freedom as to what you're learning and when you're learning, kind of the pace at which you want to do everything. For example, when I was bored of procrastinating, um, in bed and I just went on past med and I just did some questions and yeah okay you're not in the library or sat at your desk and like typing out notes from all the questions but you're still doing something and it's still helping and I've slowly realized that like it's okay not to be sat with your laptop and all of your notes and like your highlighters in a row to be learning and to be revising for what you're doing to be useful and even if you do two questions or half an hour of work or you just sit down and start doing whatever you can when you feel like it, it's all going to add up and it's all going to be fine. And the exams are not the end of the world. And I'm kind of telling myself this because exams are coming up and I'm stressed, but it's fine. Cool. Okay, well, I think that's everything. I think I've talked enough and I've probably bored you to death, but... Yeah, I hope it was somewhat helpful. Um, if you're going into your A-levels and you're going to be going to med school soon, then best of luck for your exams. And I hope this comes in somewhat handy when you're in first year. And if you're going into your first or second or whatever year exams in med school, then good luck too. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there's dust. Um, do give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel for more med school content and yeah thanks so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye